Today I want to talk to y'all about cooking nourishing meals in your kitchen three times a day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and how to avoid that frustration and burnout that can come from constantly cooking. You get one meal cleaned up, you turn it on, and there's already another meal to make. So I just want to share with y'all some tips here, some things that have made this go more smoothly for me, and hope to give you a little bit of encouragement and ideas in this video. I've seen it asked on social media before. Moms will say something along the lines of, I feel like I get the same things over and over. I need some new ideas to feed my family. Can anybody share me their favorite family meal ideas that are kid approved? Leave them in the comments below. I see that quite a bit now. While that's great, I have even looked at some of those ideas myself before just to get some new inspiration, and I love getting new inspiration. A lot of times those meals that are working for those families may not work for our family. So the meal ideas I share with you today, the things that we do in our house may not work for you, but hopefully something you can gain some insight from this and just get a little bit of encouragement on not burning out, not getting into that slump of not knowing what to cook. When you come into the kitchen three times a day to prepare a meal for your family. So I just wanna say the first thing that keeps me going is knowing that whatever I'm preparing in this kitchen is so much more healthy and nourishing and fueling my body's, my family's bodies, keeping our immune system strong than anything I could buy at the grocery store already prepared or at a restaurant. We, we live in a very rural area, so we don't even have good restaurants near us. If we wanted that option to go out to eat every now and then, so I know just in the back of my mind that every time I come to this kitchen, I'm doing this as a service, as an act of love to my family. And that right there keeps me going most of the time, but I will not say there's not times I'm just tired of being in the kitchen, but here are some things that kind of make it go a little more smoothly for me. So number one, having some sort of a plan before you start cooking your meals. Um, I used to be one where I would plan out Monday, we're having this meal, Tuesday, this meal, Wednesday, this meal. And while I still occasionally will do that in my brain, or I will think about, well, we're doing this on Thursday night. We're going to be out of the house. I'm definitely going to cook this meal that night. I do still do that along the somewhat along the lines, but I don't have like a menu on the refrigerator like I used to at one point where this like our set and stone meals for that week. I just didn't really like the aspect of having to plan that. But what I do find helpful is knowing a general guideline of what I cook every single week. The meats we like, how we like to combine those meats with sides, and just having a general plan. So, so what do we actually eat? So y'all see what we're eating. I'm cooking on this channel all the time, showing you what we eat. So we rely a lot on beef, pork, venison, occasionally chicken, and eggs. So those are our like five pro top protein sources. Buy our beef from a local farm. We buy half of the beef every year, and that lasts us most of the year. My husband harvests wild game in the hunting seasons. We raise our own pork and make our own sausage, things like that, bacon. We are in the process of learning about raising chickens. And a lot of people actually start with chickens. We didn't actually start with chickens. We started with chickens for eggs. We have about 50 laying hens. They're not all laying just yet. A good portion of our flock is laying, and right now in these spring months, we're getting close to... 20 eggs a day, which is wonderful. I've been praying for eggs to come in. So that's where the bulk of our protein comes in. As far as our produce, we grow as much as we can coming into the summer months. So we'll grow all our tomatoes, make tomato sauce, all of our cucumbers, make pickles. Our okra will freeze, we'll freeze corn and put it up for cream corn. We will have onions coming in to store potatoes. These are just things that store really well or that I can can really well to last us for the majority of the year. So a lot of our food is not fresh every week. These are things we preserved from our property as much as we could at this in this learning process. So we're not relying on grocery store trips every week. So that kind of means that we don't have a ton of variety in our meals. Uh, I, I get as creative as I can in the kitchen, but there are things that we just rely on often, the potatoes and the meat, the green beans, things with tomato sauce, recipes like that. So finally, I'll just get into kind of what we eat. So I feel like a lot of times when I'm in a rut and I'm thinking, what am I gonna cook for my family tonight? And I've went through my head of what I've already made that week. I'm like, we've already made all our favorite things. What is my family gonna eat want to eat? So I just turn to ask them. And nine times out of 10, they tell me the same five to 10 meals that they love. So it's things like a breakfast night with pancakes or biscuits, spaghetti night with homemade noodles, uh, lasagna night with homemade noodles, hamburger helper, like a homemade hamburger helper, creamy, cheesy hamburger noodle dish, rice and chicken, taco night. My kids love homemade tortillas and rolling up tacos. 
uh, pizza night. They're the same meals my family really loves. And that really gives me a lot of encouragement that my family does love the, the continual foods that we eat. Even though I may feel like we're eating the same things over and over, my family really loves those things. And it gives me a lot of less stress in trying to come up with creative new bills. So if you're ever in a rut, just ask your family what they want you to cook. How are, how are the meals going that you've been cooking, that you've been eating together? Do they want to think you, do they want to try something new? Are they tired of something and they don't want you to make it for a while? Many times your family will voice that at the dinner table if they're tired of a particular meal. But I find that my family really just requests the same few meals over and over. So I have a list in my head, running in my head at all times, of about 15 to 20 meals that we continually enjoy and go to that I'm good at making. I know how to make them basically without even looking at a recipe. I can just think through it in my head. I've made them so many times or I can throw things together in a way that I know they like and it gives me a lot less stress of being in that frustration, overwhelm of preparing food. But most of the overwhelm and the stress of getting in the kitchen and cooking three meals a day comes from trying to come up with a plan for what to cook. The actual cooking is actually very easy. It's not, there doesn't, it doesn't, when you've been doing this for a while, it doesn't take that much mental capacity to actually put the meal together. But coming up with the plan, the mental capacity to come up with a plan for a meal is probably the hardest part, at least in my opinion. So when I can just fall back on these 15 or 20 meals that my family loves, then I, there's a lot less freedom. And yes, I do like to get creative and try new recipes at times, but this season of life that we're in now with three kids about to have four, this is not really the season I'm adventuring out and trying new meals every single week. And I found that a lot of times when I do try new meals, we sit down to eat, my family is like, what is this meal? And I'll tell them and they'll eat it, but it's not like some big wow, like when I make taco night. My family just loves taco night with sourdough tortillas and it's just a big hit every time. So uh, it's kind of frustrating when you go to cook a new meal and they're just like, well, this was good, but it's not like some big wow. So it's kind of just taught me that I don't have to get, try to be so fancy in the kitchen. Just sticking with these staple ingredients that we always have on hand. Meals that include meat, broth, root vegetables that are easy to store, something with dairy to make a creamy sauce, or just a hit in our family. So let me kind of walk you through what a week looks like. So every week I know we're probably gonna thaw out a roast. So we have venison roast, beef roast. We'll have enough in our freezer throughout the year to get us about one roast per week. So I know at some point in the week, I'm gonna thaw a roast. So I usually set that out on Monday or Tuesday, let it sit in the fridge, and I know at some point in the week, we're gonna have a roast. So that will provide us at least two meals, sometimes three, depending on how I, what I add with it as far as sides, if we have it on sandwiches for like pulled pork sandwiches, if we have it in tacos for like pulled tacos, or if we just eat roast and potatoes with gravy and a side of bread. So just depending on how I pair the meal will depend on how much it are. Roast goes a pretty good ways. Um, it's going less now that our family is growing and our kids are eating more. For now, a roast provides our family several meals throughout the week. And I'm not, that, that leaves me a few meals that I can eat leftovers with. Also, every week I make some sort of soup with lots of broth. We always have broth in our house. I have a lot of broth canned. I'm always making bone broth. I'm always making sure our bones are well stocked so we can always have an abundance of bone broth to make some form of a soup. So soup is a lot of times my kids and as lunch. We have soup at some point in the week and then for several more days throughout the week, my kids and I will eat soup and grilled cheeses or just toast bread, croutons, we'll eat soup at lunch, even the summer months of soup. Soups are stretched meals so far and they, they give you a lot of leftovers, especially make a really large batch. So that's another go-to for us at some point in the week. And another one that is pretty much a go-to, I've already mentioned tacos. Sometimes we have tacos twice a week. It's kind of our family Sunday tradition after church to have tacos every Sunday. So I usually have prepared a meat the day before, whether it be a ground beef, a pulled roast, chicken, something like that, sausage, some kind of meat is already prepared. And then I also ferment our tortillas on Saturday night. So Sunday after church, I'll have to just roll out the tacos and put the tacos together. It's just a, a hit in our family. So Sunday is kind of like already set for lunch. And then we usually have tacos one other night throughout the week. I don't do the same type of tacos. So if we had like a Mexican -y taco on Sunday, we'll have more of an Asian taco or an American style taco with like hamburger meat, pickles, things like that. I just changed the flavors up for the tacos. But tacos is a big hit in our family. I've shared our tortilla recipe before. I'll leave it below again if you would like the sourdough tortilla recipe that we love. Um, 
And then throughout the week, I kind of just have this rotation of what I like to prepare each day of the week. So I don't actually plan the week, but this is kind of what goes through my head. So Sunday night, we usually have either leftovers from lunch or I make a breakfast night. It kind of ends out the restfulness of Sunday with an easy breakfast dinner because breakfast night is very easy to cook. I usually make sourdough pancakes, sourdough biscuits, bacon, sausage, eggs, just the typical breakfast. Family loves to kind of pull as they want. It's just a big fun night for everybody. So that's a lot of Sunday nights. Monday nights, I usually do some sort of a rice and a meat. So I don't have a particular every Monday we have this, but it's usually some very easy rice and meat because sometimes on Mondays we have out outside of the house activities. So that's a night I need just an easy dinner to fall back to. Tuesday is either tacos again. I told you my family does not get tired of tacos. I might think we're tired of tacos and my family does not get tired of tacos. It's either a taco night, just a different variety, or I'll make the soup that day that will last us for several more days throughout the week. Um, this is not like rigid. This is just kind of what goes through my head for each day of the week. On Wednesdays, it's usually just a basic meat and potatoes. So this might be a steak and mashed potatoes and green beans. This might be a meat patty with gravy, roasted potatoes, some sort of veggie on the side, whether it be cream corn that we've canned, um, green beans again, um, something like that, roasted carrots. It just kind of, it's one of those like basic dinners where you just have like the meat, the potato, and the veggie, sometimes the bread. Those are actually my favorite dinners because there's no combining of ingredients. You just make this, this, and this, put it on the plate, everybody's happy. It's filling, nourishing, delicious, delicious, easy meal. So that's usually a Wednesday meal. On Thursdays, for the longest time, Thursday was breakfast night. So we have breakfast sometime in the weekend, and we used to have breakfast on Thursday night. But now uh, I realize that if I do breakfast night, I don't have leftovers for Friday for my husband to take for lunch or for my kids and I to have. And a lot of times we go play with friends on Friday and we take a lunch with us. So I like to have leftovers. So Thursday is now kind of like my float day. Like, do I want to make up spaghetti that night or lasagna that night or some type of random casserole that night? Just throw ingredients together and call it a casserole. So Thursday is kind of like a float night. I just kind of pull from one of those typical lists that we all love and throw together dinner and that way I have leftovers for my husband to take to work and my kids and I to have if we we're out of the house the next day. I didn't already mention this but every dinner, whatever we have for dinner, my husband takes for leftovers for work. If we have enough leftovers, my kids and I will eat it at lunch. My kids are getting bigger so we don't always have leftovers for the kids and I for lunch with my husband taking his to work. So a lot of times we fall back on a soup, a sandwich, something very simple or like a snack board or something like that. And then Friday is pretty much always homemade sourdough pizza night. I will ferment the pizza dough early Friday morning. It will ferment throughout the day and then we'll put the pizza together tonight. It's a very simple, easy, fun night for our family and it's just a fun, fun Friday night pizza night. And then Saturdays again, depend on what we're doing. If it's summertime, we'll grill burgers. If it's not, I'll cook something in the house. Very simple. I like to make our weekend dinners very simple where I am able to spend as much time outside doing projects with the family, spending time with the family as possible, and I'm not worried about cooking dinner. Our dinners don't take me long to cook anyway because I, I just kind of put ingredients together. I've been doing this for quite a while now. It, it kind of makes it just flow seamlessly, but I'd say on average I am cooking dinner for about... 30 to 45 minutes. I don't typically spend an entire hour cooking dinner unless it's just something that had a really long cook time. But like the actual prep time of me working in the kitchen cooking the dinner is never usually more than 30 or 40 minutes. So on Saturdays and Sundays, I like to keep that even less because I don't like to come in early from whatever we're doing outside or pull away from the family and have to come in and cook dinner because I really like to spend weekends very family oriented. So that is kind of our dinners. And then as I said, our lunches just kind of fall into leftovers or we have the soup or the sandwich, the kids and I, and weekends are very minimal for dinner. Weekend lunches are actually very minimal too. A lot of times I do some type of snack board with sausage, cheese, homemade sourdough crackers, um, like a fruit, whether it be applesauce or chopped apples, sauteed blueberries and like bone broth, something very, very easy. So we haven't talked about breakfast. Breakfast is actually my absolute favorite meal of the day. I could personally eat the same breakfast every single day. It would be fried eggs with avocado toast. I've thought about this before, my love for avocado toast. I just absolutely love it. But I could eat fried eggs every single day. My kids, however, will burn out on eggs a lot quicker. Now, we still have eggs about four to five days a week, just eggs. 
toast, applesauce, yogurt, something like that. A very simple, a smoothie. But a couple of days a week, I'll change up our eggs and do a Dutch baby pancake, puff pancake, or crepes, or occasionally I'll do like a breakfast casserole. On the weekends, I try to make breakfast a little more special. So on Saturday mornings, a lot of times I'll do a sourdough coffee cake. Really delicious. Um, and that's just kind of like in my head, I just have this rhythm of what we're gonna eat of these staples. And so our breakfasts are pretty minimal. They always include eggs. My kids know they're gonna have eggs in some form of breakfast and they've just learned um, to eat them. They know that if they don't eat their breakfast, they're not gonna get a snack until lunch. Um, we, we sort of do, we don't really do a lot of snacks in our family. I've had a video on that, on how we wean our kids off snacks. So as far as snacks in our house, it's usually, if you want a snack, you can have a boiled egg, a glass of milk, a gummy, a collagen gummy, a gelatin gummy. Um, sometimes I'll, like we have yogurt a lot now that we're getting more on our dairy. So I like to keep yogurt soft and I'll give them a little bit of yogurt, but we don't have like packaged snacks that they can just grab easily. So my kids know if they don't eat their breakfast, lunch or dinner, they're not gonna have anything to tide them over. So they usually eat pretty well at these meals. So as a, what I was getting at there is eggs. I could eat eggs all the time. My kids will burn out on them. So a couple of days a week, I do throw in something different instead of just the scrambled eggs or the fried eggs or the boiled eggs, just to change it up. All that being said, I don't really have a meal plan. I just have a general rhythm and guideline in my head that I flow through every week for what helps me stay motivated to keep cooking. I know there's 15 to 20 meals my family loves and that I can always make those and they're gonna be a hit. I will list those down below for you guys if you need some ideas, inspiration. I showed you a lot of them throughout this video, but I will leave some a list down below of those that we go to all of the time if you want just some new ideas and I share a lot of these all the time in on this channel of foods I'm always cooking that we love my family loves and um, hope you got some inspiration from this again all of our families are different we all are different seasons we all have different things going on at different times throughout the week and it may hinder you from spending as much time in the kitchen but I encourage you as many meals as you can make in your kitchen, nourishing, wholesome, healthy meals, the better off your family will be as far as their health and their immune systems and their, their growth. Kids need healthy food to grow. Our bodies crave this kind of food, that this nourishing, wholesome, real food. And as we learn to give our, this, give our kids this more and more, they will crave it as well. So I hope you were motivated to just push through the burnout. I'm not saying I'll never get burnout. I'll cook breakfast and literally feel like I turn around an hour later and I'm cooking lunch. But it's just part of serving your family, loving your family, providing nourishing, whole, healthy foods for your family. And just something I've come to love like I said, I won't say I don't ever get burnt out and tired of being in the kitchen, but knowing that my family appreciates what I'm doing for their health, how I am preparing these meals so that they can stay healthy really does keep me going. And then just having a general idea of what I'm going to do every single week does help me to keep pushing through, not get burnt out, not get mentally taxed on coming up with a meal idea and just relying on those several foods that we love. And then occasionally throwing in a new creative recipe idea here and there. Thank you so much for joining me in today's video and I will see you all in my next one.